anything. If you want to be a genius in any field, you will have to have this self self control. The self control means the ability to have your mind under your control, that your mind should listen to you, rather than you being dragged by your mind here and there. So that is the important. So even when I am striving to be a spiritual seeker, the more I am able to get my mind under my control and put it where I want to put it, the greater the success I will achieve. Now clearly, no one is expecting us that, oh, just sit in 24 hours, think of God. Why don't we begin that even if I meditate for 10 minutes, during those 10 minutes, is it possible for me, forget about 10 minutes, one minute. <laughs> Can I order my own mind, well, it's my instrument, well, think about it this way. If you want to make, if you wa want to drive somewhere, you want your car to do what you want to do. If you want to turn left and you turn the wheel left, you want the car to turn left. What if the car says, oh, I don't want to go, I'm going right. Then we are in deep trouble. That's what our mind is doing right now. Even when we say, oh, this is my time for meditation. And we, we are at the wheel of our own mind and say, now think of God. And the mind says, now I want to think of something else. We are in trouble. So just as we would want our car to do what we want, we want our mind to do what we want. And when that happens, that's what control means. Here self-control is not controlling the self in the sense the Atman. Here the self means the mind. And that's why it is said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What does purity of heart mean? That is a mind which is completely in control. Then I get to decide where I should place this mind. Swami Vivekananda once famously said, he said, if I had to begin my education all over again, I would not read any books at all. He said, I would spend the first few years just training the mind. And once the mind is trained, then whatever you want to study, just imagine if the mind is fully under control, you don't need to spend years or hours studying some subject. You just get the book, a fully controlled mind, you just it's like, a, it's like a shining searchlight. You just sit it and you get what you want. That's what a trained mind can do. And that's what Krishna is mentioning here, that those yogis who strive are able to find the spirit and get the knowledge, I'm the Atman, I'm the spirit. But others who are trying, it's not that they are not sincere. They are struggling, they are sincere. But along with that sincerity, if there is no self-restraint, if there is no focus, then our mind will just go here and there. And then that effort will not bring us the required result. It's, it's, like, um, it's like one student when reached school late and the teacher said, why were you late? And he said, well, the, there was so much flood and there was such a current to the water that every every step I took forward, I was pushed back by the current two steps. And of course, then the teacher said, well, then how did you even reach the school? And then he said, well, I started walking backwards. He said, it's only a joke. It's, it's not mathematically possible. But, that, but essentially, that's what's happening. Sometimes if, if there is a current pushing us backward, and you might, oh, forget about the current. Just think about it this way. So when, now, when you take an escalator, you go to, a, to an airport or, or, a, or wherever, and say, normally, uh, <laughs> the escalator which is going up, we use it to go up. Now, try taking an escalator which is really coming down, and you try to go up. Now, first of all, you will really have to speed up your going to neutralize the coming down, if at all you want to make some progress. But that's what's happening in our life. We are sincere seekers, but while we want our spiritual life to go in one direction, there are other things in our life which are pushing us back. And that's why we are not able to see as much progress in our lives as we would like to see. 
So it's a very important verse, verse number 11. Let me stop here for today. Um, do you have any questions or thoughts, ideas, comments? trying to pursue a spiritual life for a little while. loudly yeah um, if you've been trying to do some spiritual practice for a while um, and as your life changes things may come into your life that seem to make your life more difficult and more filled with uh, confusion confusion and um so I have been in the past thinking that okay, well, what I need to do is be more quiet inside and I need to just accept what comes and withdraw more. But on the other hand, that same stuff could be the escalator going in the wrong direction. So how do you differentiate between what's coming toward you and what you should accept and work with, try to work with, and things that are just pushing you back? Well, there will be, there will always be situations in life that are challenging. In fact, once Swami Vivekananda was asked, what is life? And he said something like this. He said, it's the He didn't use the word pushing back, but the idea was this, that there are ex the external circumstances of life mm -hmm. trying to push down on, on, a, on, a, on a person and the person trying to resist the pressure of life mm -hmm. and asserting themselves. That is life. When that kind of uh, pushing back against the forces, external forces stops, then the person is dead because we don't see a dead person making any effort. So, so long as there is a struggle within us, the so long as we stop just being passive to just whatever is happening, so we need to assert ourselves. And that asserting, not in a, in a, in a kind of an egoistic kind of way, but asserting our, our being in the face of situations which are pushing us towards non-being, that is what life is. And nature is always like that. And I just mentioned, for instance, a severe winter. Winter comes, an earthquake comes, there is fire, there is rain. Nature, if we just said, oh, what to do, and just like, the human race would have been wiped off the face of the earth but there is strong rain and human beings say, I will build myself a shelter and protect myself from it. There is a, there is a, uh, uh, a storm um, or a hurricane, I will find myself a stronger shelter so that I won't be blown away by it. If there is extreme cold, I will find ways to keep myself warm. So nature, and I've just given these kind of physical ex examples, but even at this level of ideas, thoughts, emotions, feelings, the external nature, not just nature in the sense of lifeless nature, other people around. Not everyone is going to be supportive. There are going to be, there will be supportive environment, but there will also be environment which is not supportive. And we can never, we'll always have to affirm our identity. Not in, a, not in order to harm anyone else, but in order to preserve our own being. And so, to the extent we are able to do it, we will be able to move forward. And one of the challenges that comes, the challenges, I, I'm not quite sure whether the physical challenges have been reduced, Probably yes, to some extent, for many of us, most of us, I think, because at least 
there are no more these dinosaurs roaming on the face of the earth. It's like, wow, they'll come and gobble up. At least that's not happening. So physically, although there is terrorism and all of that, by and large, we seem to be more secure, at least physically now, than maybe thousands of years ago when they were at the mercy of these wild beasts in forests and this thing. But, but what about our mental stability, emotional stability? And those forces, forces of hatred, enmity, the, the, the struggle for power, acquisition, um, exploitation, those forces are still very much there. And um, so we will always have to make ourselves strong enough not to be swallowed up by these kind of subtle dinosaurs, if you like. So for a spiritual seeker, has necessarily got to be strong. Uh, that is why one of the favorite portions from the Upanishad which Swami Vivekananda often quoted was, Naya Matma Balahinena Lapyaha. This Atman cannot be reached by the weak. And by weak he meant strength at every level. So one of the things that he often said was, strength is life, weakness is death. So we have to be strong. Uh, now, the, the, now, clearly, it doesn't mean like a strength of a wrestler, that the physical. What it means is we have to do our best to affirm our strength at every level. And the beauty is this, that when we sincerely strive to affirm our being, affirm our strength, help comes in most, often in very unexpected ways, from unexpected places at unexpected time. Help will come. Devotees see that help as God's grace, as God's protective power. Jnanis will or yogis will see that same thing as, as, as the self affirming itself. It doesn't matter how you interpret it, but the truth is, if you strive to affirm your being, if you strive to be strong, help will come. And so we have to never therefore give up. That's the idea. Anything? Uh, Swamiji, when you said that uh, we have to train our mind, so who is going to train our mind? Mind is going to train our mind. Mm -hmm. So its mind has two face. Mm -hmm. So that's what we call, so our mind is already kind of divided. So that's, there is one portion of the mind which is more sane, if you like which has become more aware of a higher purpose in life. And the rest of the mind is not able to keep pace with it. And so that is why the terms that get used in books is they call it a higher mind and a lower mind. It's mind is mind. So it's, so, which is why it's like this. If at least a part of our mind didn't recognize the importance of spiritual life, we would never have come to spiritual life. And we know it's not that everyone in the world turns to spiritual life. In fact, I would imagine sincere spiritual seekers are always going to be a minority in the world. But some, we do. But that doesn't mean just because we turn to spiritual life that we have automatically become enlightened. So some portion of our mind has recognized the need for this higher aspiration in life. The rest of the mind is still kind of dragging behind. So it is this mind which is kind of become aware that has to now train and, and, and regenerate and lift. That's why the Gita says, lift the mind by the mind, lift the self by the self. Think about it this way. If you have had a dog, then uh, this might uh, make even better sense. Sometimes, you know, you heard the story, you cannot teach an old draw, dog new tricks. Now, it's easy to train a puppy because generally we believe a puppy is kind of a fresh mind and then um, it's easy to train. But what about a dog who is kind of middle-aged? Um, what to do about such a middle-aged dog? Uh, the thing is this, every dog has a little bit of a puppy inside it. And 
if the trainer is good, that trainer is able to awaken that little puppy in a dog. And sometimes you will see a dog may be aged, but if you, if you can, if you know the right way to train, you're really, because that, you know, it's like us. Why, why, why think of dog? We can just think about our own life. It's, see, it's, it's clear, of course. Now, when we are younger, there is kind of, um, um, there is more vitality, physical, mental strength, and, and, and optimism. And so tra learning becomes easy. As we grow older, uh, clearly, our energy levels keep on going down with age. And not always, but oftentimes, even the desire to learn something new kind of goes on becoming less too. And yet we will find that there will always be, at no matter what age we belong to. The other day I was reading in, in the papers that one person had person at the age of 80 or something was working for their, was studying for their PhD. I think got their PhD. In fact, I did meet one devotee last April when I was in, in Canada. Um, so she's a grandmother. She's in her 70s. And she was doing her, her PhD on, on uh, comparing Mahabharata with, with, uh, with, the, with the Greek literature. And that was, that was very inspiring. And how, from where did this, this uh, motivation come to do it? Part of the reason she said was, everyone at her home is a PhD. Her husband is a PhD, her children have become PhDs. And she said, well, she said, I had this great interest in learning, uh, but then, of course, uh, I so much, so many years went in just raising the children, taking care of them, and so now, now the children are grown up. They have gone here and there, and and everyone's telling mom, be do work for a PhD. So she said, and the interesting thing is this: well, the family encouraged her. She accepted the challenge. In fact, I think probably in the next six months or eight months, she'll be completing it. So I mentioned this to show that there is, irrespective of how the body and mind may age, there will be something within us which is still young, which is still this. If we can water that right seeds which are in our own heart, age is no barrier, strength is no barrier, we can do it. So that's that higher mind within us which which has to lift up the lower mind. So a, it's like this. A part of us is already inspired. If it were not inspired, we would not even come to spiritual life. The challenge now is this part of us which is inspired should now try to inspire the rest of us, which is still being dragged behind by past habits and, and just not just habits, but also some compulsions. So we'll have to kind of extricate the rest of us from, from this thing. It's also a little bit like, um, let's say, if someone, is, if someone is completely tied up, then there is no way you can escape. But let's say my feet are tied up and my hand is tied up, but my one hand is free. So if my one hand is free, this hand now can try somehow to, to untie the bonds and, and become free. It's kind of, I'm trying to give different analogies, but the idea is yes. So the mind is kind of little divided and the mind has to lift itself. Yeah. Anything else? Yep. So 15.10 and 15.11, you were teaching, they both are about meditation, right? Which one? Today, the Kraman, the 15.10, which we talked Every verse in the Gita is for meditation. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, well, it depends on how you, how you look at meditation. The thing is, if you look at meditation as trying to read the verse, read it between the lines, grasp what it has to say, understand the meaning, the deeper meaning, and then try to live according to it. So this entire process can be seen as, as, as a meditative practice in itself. So in that sense, yes. 
So, no, recently I went to this one place in Springfield, it's like a 10 day meditation thing, and um, for a couple of hours, uh, he, he mentioned this Vatkramantam sloka, and uh, he talked about it for a while and said, only people who can meditate by bringing the mind out of it can really see that. Thing. Right, right. And even you mentioned like how, unless your your brain is cooperating, your mind is cooperating, you might want to take it left, it takes right, so you have to mm -hmm. really focus on it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's that precisely it. So sometimes in Sanskrit, they call it vichara, discernment. We con constantly reflecting over it. Every time, once, it's like this. Once, even intellectually, if I'm convinced that I'm the spirit, I'm pure consciousness, then at least a part of me can remain alert to, the, to, the, to my intellectual conviction that I'm the spirit. And then that what that alertness will do is in the course of my day, as I go about carrying out my duties, responsibilities, as I go about doing my work, I might find instinctively, because of my past ways of thinking, I will still like see this as me. So every time my mind looks upon the body and mind as me, this part of me which is alert will have to say, no, 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 that's not me, that's not me, I am the Atman. <clears throat> so it's essentially that. It's a little bit like, um, mm, well, it's like, it's like the, when you pass through security in, at the airport, if you, if you are, if you are carrying some stuff in your pockets or something that that sound will go and they say, no, no, go back again. Until you are completely free, you won't be able to cross. So we must have some kind of a, a it's not exactly a security, but some kind of a alarm or a siren inside that every time my thinking goes in the wrong direction, there should be some kind of an inner siren. Boom, 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 wrong, wrong way of thinking. So that's, that's essentially it. That's how it will be. My, my question is this. So it's funny you said like even even if you have one minute or ten minutes um, you, when you, you try to meditate or if it's ten hours the main goal and is it like the guy who meditated ten hours versus ten minutes versus one minute what's the difference or is there any like what well the thing is this just do it for thirty seconds first <laughs> because if I cannot do it even for thirty seconds forget about ten hours but. If I can do it even for 30 seconds, then there is some hope. Maybe today I can do it for 30 seconds. And if I try harder, maybe tomorrow I might be able to do for one minute. And then I keep on. So one minute becomes my baseline. And then I keep on work, working at it. Maybe after some time I can do it two minutes, three minutes. That's the way to go forward. And then eventually, if I'm able to do it for 24 hours, well, I'm enlightened. You see, so small steps at a time. That's the idea. Okay, so we stop here today. Uh, when we meet next week, we'll begin with verse number 12. Om Jananim Saratam Devim Ramakrishnam Jagat Gurum Padapadme Tayo Shritpa Pranamami Mohur Mohu. We bow down to Ramakrishna and Holy Mother. So this Sunday we will have, instead of the usual satsang, we'll have the annual Freedom Festival. So there'll be prayer, meditation, music, uh, a reflection on freedom, because we are celebrating the Independence Day, we'll do it a day earlier, instead of July 4th, we'll do it on July 3rd, followed by potluck lunch. So. And those of you who have come to our potlucks before know there's lots of delicious food. So you're all welcome. Bring your friends and bring your favorite dishes as well. So if you want any ideas about what to bring, uh, 
you can speak with Hannah afterwards. On Tuesday and Saturday, our meditation also will continue as usual. And next week, we meet uh, to continue the study of the Gita. Let's conclude with a prayer on page 3. May the Divine Being, who is the Father in Heaven of the Christians, Holy One of the Jewish Faith, Allah of the Muslims, Buddha of the Buddhists, Tao of the Taoists, Auramasta of the Zoroastrians, the Great Spirit of the Native Americans, and Brahman of the Hindus, lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May we be granted strength, freedom, and clear understanding. May we learn to see God in our own hearts and in everyone around us. May God bless us all and fill our hearts with gratitude, grace, and love. Om Shanti 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 Peace, peace, peace be unto all.